Welcome back guys to this video in which we're gonna build a quick little dApp that will get the coin balances of specific wallet addresses. So I've pasted the wallet address in the input field and then we can see that this wallet holds the T token, the move coin, uh, it has some staked Aptos coin and then the Aptos coin itself. And if we add another address, we can see the coin balance of that specific address. And this specific one has staked Aptos and Aptos coins. We can also see the latest transactions uh, which happened a few days ago. So this is pretty cool. We're gonna build this using Morales API and it's gonna be with just a few lines of code. So if this is exciting to you, stay tuned and I will show you how to do it. Hey, I'm Joseph, your Web3 instructor from Sweden. I've been into crypto since 2017 and have been building in the space since 2021. In my free time, I enjoy playing paddle, going to the gym or hanging out with my dog. I always try to enjoy some good pancakes, but that's for another time. Now let's get back to the video. All right, guys, the first thing we want to do is to create our Morales account to get our API key. Now you can go to morales.io slash pricing to get the different plans that we have. We have the free one, which is pretty good to get started. But if you want to take your dApps to the next level, you should go with a pro account. You have more requests, you have faster response, you, you have streams to record and much, much more than what the free plan gives you. And once you've created your account, make sure you log into your Morales dashboard, go to Web3 APIs, and there you have your API key. Keep this one to yourself. I'm going to copy it so we can use it inside our project. All right. So within Visual Studio Code, I have created the Get Aptos Wallet Coin Balance folder. It, it is my root folder. And within that one, I have a backend and a frontend folder. Now let's start with backend. We're going to have to install these four dependencies, node, fetch, express, .env, and course. Then go ahead and create your .env file in the root of the backend folder to add your API key. After that, create an index.js file and we're gonna import all the dependencies we just installed. So we're gonna need node fetch. Our server is gonna be an express server on port 5001 and we're gonna need .env and course. We're gonna import our API key from the env file like this and we're gonna store it in this variable which we're going to use inside this options object and we're gonna use this options object when we do our request down here. But before we get to this request, let's go to the bottom and see that we are start listening to our server using the app.listen function. We're adding the port as a parameter and then we're just having a callback function to console log that we're listening for API calls. All right, so what's happening within this request? We have a get request on slash get wallet coins. And we're getting the wallet address as a parameter from the front-end client. That's how we can extract it from those parameters. And then we're going to use the address inside this URL endpoint link to Morales API. We're going to use the address like this. I've limited the response to 10, but that doesn't really matter. You can change that number if you want to. And once we get the response back from the Morales API, we send it to the front-end client. And from there, we can display the desired data that we want. So with that said, let's jump to the front-end client and to package.json because we're going to need to install Axios and web 3 uikit slash core. Now, this is a Next.js application, so make sure you set up that first before you install these dependencies. And to show you how clean our index.js file looks like, check this out. We only render the main component, which we have right here. But here is, here is where everything is happening. So we're gonna need use state, we're gonna import Axios, we're gonna use the image component that Next.js provides us. We're gonna use card and illustration from the Web3 UI kit core that we installed. We're gonna import the CSS styling. I'm not gonna go too deep into that one, but I'm gonna push this code to GitHub and share the link in the description below. So make sure you check that out if that's interesting to you. And we're also gonna have the Morales and the Aptos logos displaying side by side on the top navigation part. So in here, we're gonna declare a few state variables. We're gonna have the wallet address and it's gonna be an empty string. We're gonna have the result, it's gonna be an empty array. And then we're gonna have the show result and it's gonna be false to start with. Now I have this because I want to control when to display the section with the results and when not to. So when we don't have a result to display, I don't want to show anything. So that's gonna be false and we're gonna change this later on. Now we have these two functions, the handle change and the handle submit. Before we jump into those, let me show you what we're rendering. Let me minimize this section and open this one instead. We have the header section, 
which includes the logo of Morales and of Aptos. And then we have the search input field right here and the submit button right here. So on the input field, we have this on change function, the handle change, which is this one. So every time we type, we update the wallet address variable by calling its set function and adding that value in there. And then once we hit the submit button right here, we call the handle submit function, which is this one. And what we do right here, because we have the input value in this state variable, we can empty the input field and we can we can do a get request using Axios to our backend server, which is on port 5001. And to the endpoint, we just created the slash get wallet coins. And we're gonna pass along our wallet address as a parameter. And that's how we were able to get that in the backend server. Now, once we get the response back, we're gonna save the response.data.results array in this state variable right here, which was an empty array to begin with. And then we're gonna set the show results to true because now is when we want to display the results. All right, let's continue right here. I'm gonna try to minimize this one more time and open this one instead, because here we can see that if show results is true, then we want to display this data. And what we do here is that we take result, the state variable, and we're gonna map through the whole array. And for each and every item in this array, we want to create a section which is gonna include a card with an illustration. So what's in this card? We have the title, which is the token amount, and we're doing some formatting because Aptos has eight decimals. And we also want to display the coin type. So if it's an Aptos coin, if it's a state Aptos coin, if it's a move coin, and so on and so on. And then inside the illustration, we want to display this token logo basically. So if we go back to our browser, we can see that this is the logo I'm talking about. And we can see that this is the end of the code guys. So with just a few files, we can get the data of which coins a wallet holds on the Aptos network and display them beautifully like this. It's very simple, it's very quick to fix. And to demonstrate it once again, I'm gonna paste in the first wallet address one more time and we can see the tokens that this wallet currently holds and the latest transactions along with the amount of each and every token. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this quick little video on how to use the get coin balance by wallet on the Aptos network provided by Morales. I hope I will see you in the next video. Until then, make sure you smash the like button.